In this video, I'll be showing you simple methods for polishing your jewelry with a bench lathe using Fordham tools from our friends at autofry.com. Today I'm going to review Fordham's MAFH25 Power Filter Hood Dust Collector. And I'm also going to show you two different types of lathes, the Fordham M.BL and the Value Line Euro Tool. Hello jewelry makers, I'm Leslie Kale Villarreal and today I'd like to talk to you about polishing and finishing on a bench lathe. Uh, I don't have a lot of room in my studio for a big one so I'm going to demonstrate some really nice uh, ones that I got from my friends at Auto Fry. And as you know, when you're polishing uh, your jewelry, it can be really messy business. So you've got polishing compounds going everywhere, you've got uh, pieces of muslin and cotton from your buff going everywhere. And it's really important to have some way to catch that debris so it doesn't end up number one in your lungs in your studio or all over your, your walls and, and your equipment. So I'm going to show you a really nice uh, option and solution for that that might fit into your home studio bench setup. Okay. All right, but first before we get there, I just wanted to explain a little bit about polishing and finishing for anyone who's new and might be confused about it. If you are a new jeweler and you're trying to find the right polishing compounds, it can be overwhelming because each vendor that makes polishing compounds uses different colors for different grits. So the best way to think about it is like sandpaper. So we begin with the most aggressive grit and then we work our way down gradually to the least aggressive compound and that nece doesn't necessarily translate to colors. You just need to understand what you're working with. So usually when I'm at the bench, I try to do most of my finishing on a small piece right here. And I use a variety of things like pumice wheels um, and spider wheels. Um, these are the 3M little wheels. And you can actually do these on a bench lathe too. Um, the, the Fordham does have an attachment so that you can mount these Big, bigger ones because they're good for polishing and removing solder and little things like that. So those are great little tools that you can use with your flex shaft. You can even use little mini buffs. Okay, but when you're talking about polishing compounds, I do as much as I can at my bench and then I take them over to the lathe. Okay, and quite often I'll just use one grit because I also use things like tumblers and magnetic pin finishers. So I don't necessarily need to go with three steps of compound to get a perfect finish for my jewelry. So it really just depends on what kind of jewelry you're making, what kind of metals you're using, and that will really decide what kind of compounds you want. Um, but just to make it really simple today, I'm going to talk about the ones that I use. I don't use a lot of different compounds. Some people use several. I don't. So I, because mostly I, I polish silver um, and high carat gold, which doesn't need a ton of polishing because I do uh, 22 karat gold granulation work and I don't really need to use a lot of high polish on that kind of stuff. But, and I might start with the most aggressive, which is a bobbing compound. And that is a pretty aggressive uh, compound. And um, I'll use my bobbing compound and then I'll go over to um, my, my rouge. And for rouge, I use Dialux Blue for silver and I use Dialux Red for gold. You can use Dialux Red for either silver or, or gold, but the blue is just a tiny bit more aggressive for silver and I like it better for silver. Okay, and then if I need a really high mirror finish, you can choose the Dialux White or the Luxie White. They both work fine. Or I've got a big one. This one I keep at my bench and I stick my little um, buffs in there so I know which one goes to which. And that leads me to the next conversation is different types of buffs. Auto Fry carries a variety of buffs that will fit your flex shaft and your bench lathe. You can choose the buffs that are best for your project. In my studio, I just use the muslin and the cotton options, and I can use anything from a 2 inch up to a 4 inch on my little lathe. These sizes all work great, just depends on the piece and the size that I'm working with. Um, the more area that you have to cover, the bigger the buff, okay? When you're using a bench lathe, you need to use pressure. So as I'm uh, on my lathe, I want to push my piece into the wheel as it's spinning, and I only work from this lower quarter because anywhere up here can make my jewelry fly off. So I usually just work right down this area, this quarter, you can think of it like a little pie in this little quarter here from say what it would be like three o'clock down to six o'clock. That is the area that I would work to polish my jewelry. Okay. So this is a multi-stitch muslin buff. Okay. So when I use this on my bench for the first time, fluffs are going to go everywhere, little pieces of muslin. So what you do is you just take scissors 
and you clean off all those little pieces and eventually they will lie down, but they will just, you know, you can see they're just flying everywhere. <laughs> and that's another reason that the bench hood is great. You can also use a fork as a rake to get a lot of those extra fibers out. And I will demonstrate that for you later in the video. And uh, one of my favorite ones are these cotton buffs. These are nice, they don't fly around as much, but they also are multi-stitch, so they'll give you a nice firm um, application of your polish. And that's important if you're trying to get you know, a really serious shine or a serious, you know, maybe you're using the bobbing compound and you want to get it in there and get a hard press against it. Um, and then when you're buffing, you kind of go across the buff. As I'm putting my piece in, I'll work across it and I'll press my piece into it, which I'm going to demonstrate for you. All right. The other thing about buffs that's really important and polishing compounds is you never cross contaminate. So um, a lot of jewelers don't really understand why that is. I've seen jewelers take a buff load it up with a bobbing compound, and then uh, decide they're ready for the next one, and then they just load uh, their rouge right onto the same buff. That is a big no-no, and I want to explain why. It would kind of be like if you took an 80-grit piece of sandpaper and sanded a piece of metal, and you wanted then to take out those 80-grit scratches with maybe a 220, but you just used another 80-grit all over again because you didn't clean off the prior stuff. Okay, so it's really important to use a clean buff with each compound for the first time and then you can use that same buff with that same compound every time. And a good way to stay organized, which is what I like to do, is I keep my, my buffs in a bag with each um, compound. So this is my bobbing compound and I only use the bobbing compound buff with that one. I never use this buff with any other compound. I only use it with a bobbing if that's the one I'm going for. This is my Dialux Blue, and I only use it with the Dialux Blue buff that I've made for it, okay? And I also have one for my Luxie White, and I only use it with Luxie White buffs, okay? And it's the same at the bench when you're sitting here with your flex shaft. If you've got a Luxie White on your finishing wheel, that's the only um, polish you should ever put on it and keep it there, because otherwise you're not gonna be able to get those different levels of polishing by removing the scratches from the previous abrasion that you used with your compound. Okay, so that's just how I do it and that's might be a way that's helpful for you. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you over and show you the new Fordham uh, mini hood with the fan in it that I can use at my bench here with my flex shaft when I'm, whether I'm grinding metals or whatever I'm doing, it's got three different filters and it works really nicely, or I can use it with my bench lathe. And like I said, I don't have a lot of space on top of my bench for a lot of tools. So this is really great because it's small. And I'll show you how to use that one in just a minute. And I'll also demonstrate how to polish a ring. And um, I'll show you that. Okay, so now I wanna talk to you about this important addition to my studio. <laughs> This is the uh, filter hood from Fordham. Okay, so some quick specs are it's seven and a half inches high, six inches wide, 12 and three quarters inches deep, and it weighs nine pounds. It's really a nice heavy unit. It has a gooseneck lamp, and that measures 16 and seven eighths inches long, and it, and it comes with a 24 month warranty. For more specs, visit the autofry.com website. And it's really, really wonderful. I love it so much. It's so great because I didn't have room for one of those really big setups. Um, my Both of my benches are just full of tools and I, I didn't have any room for it. So this little guy I can put on my bench even while I'm working uh, with my flex shaft and I can come in and hold my flex shaft in here with my work and it cleans up all the mess. One thing about having a studio uh, for jewelry is you've got just metal flying everywhere and you've got polishing compounds and fluff from your buffs. And it's just, it gets really messy if you don't have a good ventilation systems for certain units to keep everything clean. And this one is wonderful because it's so compact and it fits in my studio really nicely. And it's pretty affordable, I, I think, for what it is. This little filter hood comes with a swivel shield. It's got a little shield that you can lock into place it has little knobs here, and you can turn it to hold it where you want it. Maybe you want it up high, maybe you want it down low, um, but it, it'll block anything also coming up so it doesn't hit you in the face. It's got a removable splash tray, so if you get anything down there, you can clean it out really easy. It also has a removable cord, so if you need to replace or remove the cord and store it away, um, it's easy to do. 
I really like that option because sometimes when I'm cleaning my desk and I want to take my tools off and clean, I don't want to have to unplug everything from the outlet. And I love these options when tools have this. This is really important to me. It might not be important to you, but for me it is, okay? This unit comes with three replaceable filters. And you can see that they slide in very easily right in front of the motor and the fan. You can get replacement packs from autofry.com anytime you need them. Okay, so to turn this unit on, it's got a little um, dial on the top. And one thing I do want to mention is that when you are pulling this out of the box, it has a warning to not to lift it by this light. This is a light here, and if you lift it by the light, you could break it. So they ask you not to do that. And it's got a little red thing in the back that says lift here, and that's where you lift it. I'm just going to bring it down so you can see where the fan motor is right here. So you can see how much space that's going to take up. All right. And to turn it on, you can hear the light comes on. It makes it really great for um, viewing. This is um, this is so great. I just love it. I'm going to stick it right on my bench, and I'm going to use it with my flex shaft, and I can also use it here. So because it's so small and lightweight, it's just terrific. Okay, and the light goes off when you turn it. Just one switch to deal with, so there's not that much there. All right. Now I'm going to show you how the... Um, bench lathes fit in here. Like I was saying earlier, either one is fine. You get the one you can afford and the one that you think is the best for value for you. So let's talk bench lathes. This unit is the Fordham M.BL from my friends at Auto Fry and it's part number 134346. Quick specifications, 1 sixth horsepower, 125 watts, 5 16 diameter motor shaft, ball bearings, 500 to 7,000 RPMs, Unit is 13 inches wide, 5 and 1 eighths tall, and it has a height spindle center from the table to the surface of about 3.34 inches. So this is a really nice little unit. This unit powers up to 7,000 RPMs. So it goes from zero, and then the max would be the 7,000 RPMs. So this is a really nice little unit, uh, and what I like about it is it's heavy. Okay, so uh, the other cheaper blades are not as heavy and it has little suction cups on the bottom. So if you have a steel bench to mount it to, and even on my wooden bench, I can get suction and it holds it steady. Um, I do still recommend though that you do screw it to something, bolt it down because it's really good to have it secure. As you know, when you are polishing on, on a, a wheel, you have to put pressure on your piece in here and you don't want it to tip or you know move and knock a piece loose. So it's very important that you bolt these kind of units down um, and don't just rely on the little suction cups on the bottom of this one. And just like the Fordham hood that I showed you, this one also has a uh, removable plug so you can replace the plug if you need to um, or you can remove it when you're cleaning and you don't have to uh, take it out of the outlet. Another nice feature on this unit is that there's only one switch on and that's it and when you turn that all the way off you're done um, so I do like that about it very much this unit does have tapered spin spindle adapters where you can uh, use them to put on other things such as a 3m wheel uh, and other accessories this one only goes up to 7,000 rpms but most of the polishing I do is on silver and for silver you really it works better on lower speeds so when you're polishing you don't really need anything bigger than the 7,000 RPMs are more powerful. Okay, so this is a great unit made by Fordham and it's made in Taiwan. Fordham offers this attachment, the A-RW foam rubber wheel, four inch. You could do some light lapidary work with this unit and it is part number 117925. All right, this is the TM2 bench lathe from Auto Fry and it's made by Eurotool. It's about the same size as the other one, but it's much lighter. Okay, I'd say it's at least a couple pounds lighter. It's probably four, maybe four pounds. Um, <clears throat> and it does not have suction on the bottom, so you definitely want to bolt that down. Uh, it does, however, have 10,000 RPMs. So if speed is important to you or higher RPMs, this would be a good choice for you. Okay, and to power it on, we just press this little button. The red light comes on, and we turn the dial. And as long as the blue light is on, it's running, you turn that off, and then you turn off the power switch over here. So it does have two places to power it. 
Uh, also, this cord does not come out as permanent, so you cannot unplug it for cleaning. You have to unplug it for the outlet. But it's still, for the, for the money, it's still a decent little unit, and it's about the same size, and it will also fit in that Fordham bench hood that I showed you earlier. So depending on your price range and your budget, you can choose the one that works best for you. Okay, put in the 110 bolt only. Okay. So I'm going to show you now how to just thread on something. This is just a small little wheel and it's probably going to be very fluffy. These just have like a little spindle action. I just hold it and it turn and it attaches. Okay, so it's got about, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch sticking out on the end here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first show you uh, polishing a ring. This is another attachment that you can get. This is an inside ring shank holder. So I could also put something like this on one end. They just screw on the same way. And I could put some compound on there and I could polish the inside if I wanted to. Auto Fry sells these felt ring buffs and they come in a variety of sizes and widths and you can choose the one that you like to use for the jewelry that you make. A few things on safety. A bench lathe is a serious tool and can cause serious injuries if you're not properly protecting yourself. I like to wear a face shield. Um, you can also wear eye protection such as goggles and you should wear some sort of a particulate mask. Even though the unit does absorb a lot of that stuff for you, it's still important to protect yourself. Um, a lot of people don't want you to use gloves at all because it's very easy to get a finger caught in a fast moving spindle and you don't want to end up without a finger. It's not worth it. I'm using a latex glove that is very tight fitting, but bare hands are always the safest. Also, when you're polishing at the bench, always make sure that you have your, your body positioned directly in front of the lathe wheel that you're using. Never access it from off to the side. Um, always be directly in front to be safe. Use it this way. I'll just turn this on, get it going. Turn this guy on and let's start with a bobbing compound. Um, I'll show you a little bobbing compound here. So when you uh, apply your compound, you don't want to add too much. I just go over it. You see all the stuff coming off? This is one in the muslin buff where I told you it's going to be messy. Okay, so I just rubbed it across for a minute and I'm done. You don't need to overload your wheels. But overloading your wheels with too much compound makes it even worse. And you can see all these little fuzzies that are coming off. And it's a good idea just to take your scissors at this point and trim those down. If you're using in a muslin buff, because that's what will happen. They'll come off after a time, and then you won't have to worry about them anymore. But they do make quite a bit of a mess when you're first starting off. Okay? All right. So that's that. Um, let's see. So... I've got this on. You can see how the fan is catching. I wanted to use the messy one so you could see all of the action that's happening here. It's actually keeping all of that from coming off, okay? Anytime I'm working on a buff like this, I want to work from, from here to here, okay? I don't want to go under or over because it's going to suck the piece up and throw it back at me. You never want to work from the top. It'll throw it at you. So you always want to hold it down here in this quarter section of the buff, okay? Okay, so I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to turn it up a little bit. I had this probably on my dial right there, not even up all the way. Like I said, silver goes better at lower speeds. So this is a piece of jewelry I wear a lot. It's got a lot of little nicks and scratches in here. We're going to do our best to clean it up. Okay, so I'm going to go in with a bobbing compound because there's a lot of scratches. And I'm going to use a little bit of pressure when I go in here. And you're going to want to make sure you've got a very secure grip. Okay, you don't, if, if I'm holding loose, that thing could go flying. I'm going to adjust this plate down so it doesn't get in my way. And I'm going to put on my face shield and or uh, eyewear, goggles, whatever you want, and I'm going to just kind of aggressively, now I don't have this um, Fordham bolted down, which I will, I just don't have it bolted down yet, but I'm going to go in aggressively using pressure, I'm going to work that compound in, okay, 
a lot of scratches on the back of the ring as well that I want to get out. Turn this up just a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm taking out the first layer of scratches. So I'll go over this ring and I'll try to get out as much as I can with this layer. And if the ring does get caught and it goes, you, you, you feel the, the lathe pulling at you, it's let go of it. Don't try to hold on to it because I don't care how precious it is, it isn't worth losing a finger or something. And remember, you're always working from this part of the lathe, or of the wheel, I should say. But I've gone through and gotten out a good layer of those scratches. So now from here, um, the next thing I would want to do is I would want to put it in my ultrasonic. Or if you don't have ultrasonic, you could use like a Blue Dawn. It's super important that you stop after each grit that on the wheel and you clean all of the compound off of that piece before you switch to another grit because if you don't you're just going to it's like contaminating the wheel back again so you need to make sure you stop and you clean it before you go on to the next grit okay so let's just stop and look at all the nice particles that that nice little bench hood has caught and saved me from breathing in and cleaning up in my studio you can see there's quite a bit of gunk in there and if you don't have one of these hoods when you're polishing, this stuff goes all over your studio. Okay, and then we'll take another just look at where we're at with the ring right here. Okay, so this is what we've got. It took out quite a bit of those scratches. And now I'm going to go throw it in the ultrasonic, and we're going to come back and give it another hit with the uh, Dilux Blue. Okay? Okay, so while my piece is in the ultrasonic, I'm just going to remove this one. And I twi you twist toward, I twist toward myself for this side of the spindle. I could leave it on also and just flip this around, but I'm just going to take it off because I always put them away when I'm done. So I'll put this one in with the bobbin compound, and this will be my little bobbin count, compound wheel from now on. All right, so then I'm going to go and I'm going to grab the um, one that I'm going to use for my Dialux Blue, and it says Dialux Blue right on it. Okay, I'm going to twist it away from myself. Let me give it a little twist, and there we go. Twist them until there's about a quarter inch sticking out on the, on the back. All right, so while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to just make sure this is clean. And usually I do this after I'm done, but when you want to clean them, they, they do make rakes for cleaning these things, but if you don't have one, you can just use a fork. Um, I usually turn it up a little bit, and I just take a fork this way, and I just... You take that all, all, if there's any metal caught in there or if there's anything icky, just kind of rakes it and cleans it up a little bit. And you always want to make sure that you've got this supported so it doesn't get away from you. Okay, so that's clean. And I'm going to load it up with my dial up glue. Okay, and I am going to. Go get my piece out of the ultrasonic and come back and finish polishing. All right, so now I'm back. I've got my ring out of the ultrasonic. I've gotten rid of all of the bobbing compound and I'm ready to do another go. Also, I'm gonna push my sleeves up just to be safe. Like I said, you wanna use pressure. So I like to push into it a little bit and work the piece around. And I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but let's, I'm going to try to show you this side versus the other side. So this is the side I just did the, with the Dilux Blue, and this is the side that's just the bobbing compound. You can see how dull this side looks and how shiny this side looks. Okay, so it's quite a difference. I'm not sure how well you can see that in the camera, but it's really, really obvious here. So I've practically got a mirror finish on this. And like I said, I usually don't go past this. This is as far as I go, but you could do one more step with the white polish. So I'll just finish this one up and show you. 
It really doesn't take that long as long as you're doing it correctly. So I have a really good grip on my piece so it's not going to come out of my hand. It's not going to go flying anywhere. I'm working down at the bottom here. Great, super shiny, practically a mirror right there. But I'm going to throw it into the ultrasonic one more time, and I'll come back and I will do a um, a white polish on it just to show you the difference. Okay, I've taken off my old wheel and I put it in the bag with the polish for the Dilux Blue, and now I have the buff for the white polish already loaded, and I'm going to polish my ring one last time to give it that nice high bright mirror finish. I'm going to put it back in the... I'll just do one side and then we'll take a look. So I will keep working it and it will get prettier. But usually, like I said, I don't really go much past the blue. But with a piece like this where you want a mirror finish, it's probably worth going ahead and hitting it. And getting the uh, the white polish at the end here. And then you know after this, you really we still wouldn't see the the beauty of it until I've removed all of the polish with the ultrasonic and probably run it through a steam cleaner. because it's still, it's still got the polish on it, okay? So I'm gonna polish the inside of the ring before I clean it up. Okay. There we go. All right, and I've already put a little bit of uh, white polish on here, so I'm just going to, um, be really careful, you wanna have a good grip on this so you don't let it go flying. And I'm just pushing up around, working my way around that felt piece. I'll turn this off and then I'll remove the ring. And you can see I got a pretty shine on the inside too. So I'm going to go throw this in the ultrasonic, get all this polish off, and then we'll take a look. Okay, so while my ring's in there, I'm just going to show you um, this is a cuff. And normally what I do is I just do the Dilux Blue, which I was explaining. I do everything else at the bench, and then I come over, and I just do the Dilux Blue. I'm going to show you. Uh, let me show you the side that hasn't been polished first, and then I'll show you the other side. I'll just do one side. If I were going to do something for a client and they wanted a really high finish. Now this has been roller printed. Actually this has been etched. So I would de definitely not do any bobbing compound because it could take off some of the design. This is from my Cup Royale online class. It's a beautiful piece. And it's a little bit dirty, but you can still kind of see. I won't go through all the steps with this one, but I just wanted to kind of show you how nice it is to have. I like the bigger wheels um, more than I do the smaller wheels. But see that shine? And this is the dull other side. And this is the new shiny side. Okay, and it still needs to be cleaned up because there's polishing compound inside, so it'll get even prettier as I go and I progress. And the more time I spend on it, the prettier it will get. It's already quite glossy. All right, so... Um, then of course I want to get the inside because the inside has not been polished either. Okay, so let me go get my ring out of the um, ultrasonic and we'll take a look and see where we are. All right, so this ring is blinding me right now. <laughs> it's so it's so mirror. It's very funny, but it's very beautiful. Um, my fingers are going to get it all printed up again, but for the video it's okay. But it's quite beautiful. It's really, really reflective. And those three steps were exactly what this piece needed with the bobbing compound and then with the uh, blue, Dilux blue, and then of course with the white. Okay, so it just gives you an idea of what you can accomplish with the right tools. And then of course the ultrasonic is a really important step here. And again, if you don't have one, um, you can use like a blue dawn or whatever to get the polishing off in between, but 
uh, polishing your jewelry is pretty important. So thanks for watching that little mini tutorial. There's obviously so much more that you can accomplish with different kinds of compounds for different metals and different attachments for your lathe. It's just a little introduction to things that you can do with the lathe and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> and if you'd like to check out some of my online classes and learn to make some of the pieces that I show in some of my videos, visit me at lesliekalevillareal.com. And please be sure to visit autofry.com and check out all the wonderful tool assortments they have, pretty much everything you can think of that a jeweler would need. Have a great day. Keep on making pretty things. Peace out.